Lord, help me to know your will. Elizabeth writes to a kind cousin, Eugenie Dulong. Dear cousin, I do not have the means to obtain all I will need for my trousseau. I come to beg your help. There was a typhus epidemic in 1847. The nuns get exhausted. They build more cabins for patient overflow. Some of the patients died. <laughs> this typhus epidemic brought in by the Irish immigrants <laughs> terrifies the people of Bytown. <laughs> the nuns get very sick. Here, Elizabeth is comforting an infant. Elizabeth becomes a sister. Father Telmo wants her to open a school in Bytown in 1844. One of the nuns gets sick, so Elizabeth becomes superior. Elizabeth wrote, Here I am in Bytown. May God's will rather than my own be done, she writes. Then began the first bilingual school in Ontario. They also opened the first hospital. Elizabeth depended on divine providence. They want her to stay in Bytown. Lord, I give myself to Bytown forever. I have no other hope but in God alone. In July 1848, Bishop Joseph Geeks, OMI, the first bishop of Bytown, says, Be assured, Mother, of my total dedication to your beautiful congregation of grey nuns in Bytown. He dies February 1874 and is replaced by Bishop Joseph Thomas Duhamel, who accepts the congregation as Bishop Geeks did. Laying cornerstones for Mother House, 1849. Only their works of charity spread. School children, the sick, prisoners. In 1861, the cornerstones are blessed for construction of a new hospital. They have lack of funds in 1863, but because of loans and benefactors, it was finished in 1865. I place a health care project under the patronage of St. Joseph. Divine Providence will see to it. An unbounded confidence in Divine Providence could bring us to risk such a venture. Now we will be able to house our poor, our elderly, and our sick. In September 1854, in a letter from Sister Deschamps, we recognize as an established fact your independence from Montreal. Their rule was also completed. Dear Father Aubert, when I am alone before God and I begin to number all his blessings, all the progress we have made since our arrival in Bytown, I am filled with utter gratitude and tears well up in my eyes, writes Mother Briere. Many convents and missions spread. Some of the convents were in Elmer, Pembroke, also all over the world. 1875. She gets ill on trip to Buffalo. She has an enlarged heart. My dearly beloved daughters, love one another. Be of one heart and one mind. She dies Wednesday, April 5, 1876, at 7.30 a.m., saying, My dear Jesus. <laughs>